What's going on, y'all? It's me, Josh. I know that I'm not the star of this channel, but... This is Josh's channel. We're just on it. <laughs> Kristen always is uh, looking so nice. I'm always wearing, like, you know, t-shirts from, like, youth camps and stuff like that. Dressed and, to impress. Uh, Kristen's always looking so nice. She's got, like, <laughs> fancy clothes on. She's got her makeup done. Looking pretty. Looking fine. Okay, and so. I'm over here wearing, look, brass, Bass Pro hat and a youth camp shirt. A Brass Po? Brass Po. <laughs> okay, so y'all, I do need to tell you guys a little bit about the shirt that I'm wearing. This is by Lily Silk. Um, they're actually the sponsor for today's video. And so I'm going to take you guys home for just a minute, and I'm going to show you some of the beautiful items that they sent me. And then we can come back, and Josh and I can discuss how <laughs> we met. So I'm into it. Let's get started with that. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome to my living room. As you guys know, in the past, I talk a lot about thrifting natural materials. At the thrift store, I have been able to find plenty of cotton items and even a lot of linen items, which I've been really excited about. The only fabric that I really have a hard time finding at the thrift store is silk items. And so when Lily Silk reached out to me to do a collaboration, I was over the moon. So today I'm going to be showing you a few of the items that they sent me and pairing them with some of the items that are in my own closet. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Lily Silk. With over 12 years expertise in silk making, designing, and manufacturing, Lily Silk has everything you can imagine with silk. Lily Silk provides affordable investment pieces with a wide product range, such as blouses, pajamas, pillowcases, bedding sets, and more. Something that's really awesome about Lily Silk is that they are a zero waste company. The fabric remains that are left over from making their other products are used to make like face masks or pillowcases or scrunchies. They've got lots of options. They also work with TerraCycle, which is a world known recycling company that is committed to zero waste production. Lily Silk's motto is that not all silk is created equal. They use only 100% premium natural materials like mulberry silk, which is like the queen of fibers and Mongolian cashmere which is like soft gold. They go to great lengths to keep their products clean and toxic free with Oeco Tech certification. Okay, so let me try on a couple of these for you. This is their SOS shirt, which stands for Silk Oversized Shirt. I'm just kind of wearing it loose right now. I've got it paired with these Zara pants and some boots. I like it just kind of loose. It makes me feel like George of the Jungle when Ursula is falling in love with him when he's like, hurting the horses, you know what I mean? I feel very cool in it. I'm actually wearing a horse belt with it too, which is very appropriate. So I could either wear this out like this, or I could tuck it in in the front. And I think both options are really cute. And if romance is more of your style, I have this paired with this pretty long cotton kind of like prairie skirt. I did unbutton it one more just to give it that nice feminine neckline. As you can see this time and last time, I did roll up the sleeves. This is a personal preference. I just do it with all of my button downs. I feel like the sleeves just hit me at a nicer spot. It seems a little bit more feminine. Uh, but I love this combination. It does have that kind of like pretty and academic prairie style going on. And this is the lace silk two-in-one cami. I kind of took this to be almost like a sleep shirt. And so the first look that I'm going to show you is more of that. I actually think that this would look super cute tucked into these linen high-waisted pajama pants. And you know what? This actually doesn't even have to be like a pajama outfit. I just thought it was really beautiful. As you can see, there's this lovely delicate lace that's right across the top. For me, being around the house all the time, this is perfect. Okay, here's a little bit more structured look. I've got this lovely cami with these long army green shorts. And you guys, if you're looking for something more structured, a belt always does that trick. And I also paired this with this cute little kind of heavy duty linen jacket, which I feel like also kind of makes it a little bit more ready to go out the door. Okay, you guys, so this is definitely a wild card. You guys know that I don't wear black, but when I saw this shirt, I just had to have it. I thought it was so beautiful. This is called the Louisville Silk Print Shirt. You guys, it's very classy. That's all I have to say. So it's got kind of like these chains and it looks like leather and gold and pearls all over it. I couldn't turn it down. When I brought it into the house, Josh was like, whose shirt is this? He thought that it was somebody else's because it looks so different than my normal style. But you guys, I love it. Especially paired with these high-waisted 
khaki pants that I have. Um, and I'll go show you a pair of shorts just to kind of dress it down. I know that this is a little bit of a crazy combination, but I just thought, you know, if you are going to lunch or you live somewhere with a warm climate, giving it kind of the half tuck, it kind of gives it a little bit of a casual look. With that, I want to say thank you so much to Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. You have no idea how much these sponsorships help me. Use my code KH12 for 12% off of anything in store. And you can also use my code K25 for 25% off for the second pair of women's apparel or sleepwear. All right, now let's get back to that story. I'm glad you're here. We are here to tell you guys a little bit about the story of how this all happened, how we met, how we got married, and the whole story leading up to it. <laughs> Josh will have to tell you the first portion because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> My sister lived in a small town called Wiley, uh, a suburb of Dallas, and um, I was going to school in South Dallas. I was going to visit my sister one day, and she said, yeah, my new roommate's here. She's painting her room. You should go say hi. And so I, I pop into the guest bedroom, and lo and behold, there's uh, this hot thing paint, painting her Stop. walls. <laughs> A hideous green color. It was horrible. It was so gross. It was, it was like a baby green color. I wanted it to be like this pretty sage and it was just the ugliest green ever. But I was so poor at that time that I couldn't afford another can of paint. But I think before they were orange. So it was like either like this awful orange or this baby green. I, I walked in and and there she was. I mean, obviously she's beautiful. Introduced myself. She was listening to the Beatles at the time and you know, talked a little bit, you know, said, nice to meet you. I'll be around here and there whenever I visit my sister. I made minimal eye contact. Yeah, I she's busy painting. It was September 11th. September 11th, yep, that's right. It was the 10th anniversary. So that's actually how I remember the day that we met. I left and then I think at that point I had a full beard. The next time that I met her or saw her, I had shaven my beard all off and I just had a really big curled mustache and I think I was wearing glasses. And a hat. And a hat or something. Okay, so, so I, I looked totally different. I had heard that Kayla, his sister, had brothers. I didn't know where they lived. I didn't know how many there were. And so when her brother came and introduced himself to me, at the time I was dating somebody else and Josh will tell you, if I'm dating somebody like, I don't give you the time of day. And so this guy wasn't even a good dude, but still I was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. You know, but I just kind of went on with my painting, did my thing, he kind of hung out for a little bit. Yeah, I was polite, but I was not overly friendly, I would say. The second time that he came to stay with us for, I think it was over like a long weekend or like a four day weekend or something. Yeah. And I was going through a really difficult time personally. So just knowing that there was my roommate's brother coming and staying with us for, a few days. I just didn't even pay it any attention. I was like, I don't know, there's some dude in my house, but I'm literally just going to work, coming home, going to bed kind of thing. He was in my house for days, like days. I don't even know if I ever spoke to him, even looked him in the eye, nothing. I was... <laughs> it was a relatively big house and the rooms were on opposite sides of the house right. and all that stuff. So you were busy, you had other stuff going on. I you were like... working a ton. Yeah. <laughs> so we met again. She thought I was a different person. No, okay, so actually we, he had been with us for days and then we went to church together oh, yeah. on Sunday and we went to lunch afterwards. And on after lunch, after spending the whole weekend and church and lunch with him, I finally asked our now brother-in-law, I was like, is that the same person that I met? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't said a single word. Like we had a full on conversation and I haven't said a single word to him in like three days of him staying with us. I felt so rude, but if anybody knows me, they know that that's just me. I am horrible at remembering people. <laughs> and, and to further uh, make that example, after we had been married for a good while, I think a year or two, um, I shaved my beard for a job and she walked in and walked past me uh, not realizing that it I was me. I didn't even know it was him. <laughs> uh, now I do say all the time that if I shave my, my beard, I look like a fat 14 year old. I didn't pay you any. She didn't pay any me any attention. attention. <laughs> yeah, so I actually appreciated that because, you know, as far as I knew she was dating somebody else and I'm not interested in people that 
are in relationships. You know, that's not that's not how I am. It's not what I'm about. I actually really admired it in her. You know, yeah. a little while later, I think it was that winter break. I was coming to stay at my sister's house again, and we had we had seen each other a few other times between then. I think in that time, you had broken up with the guy that you were dating. Yeah. Right. And so. Because I would like cling to him because I was like, hey hang out with me because we're pals and this way no boys talk to me because I did not want I somehow it was just like in the air and everybody knew that we had broken up and so I was trying to keep these boys from hollering and I was like just stay next to me so that these people don't try to come up to me and flirt with me so rude yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, him. great and that winter break I stayed and we became better friends I mean we had been he was in the house for like weeks and weeks at this yeah. point. Yeah, and my, my family, like my parents and my brother even came and stayed. We became better friends and... Yeah. Um, Josh and I would like stay up all night. We'd be like watching reality TV shows or like there was other times that we would stay up in my room. But I was like, it's not that I wasn't comfortable with having you alone in my room, but I didn't want him to get any ideas. And so I would have him sit on like on the floor against a wall and I would sit on the opposite wall, like <laughs> just sitting on both ends of the the room and we would like stay up all night. I really like Josh and like he's obviously cute, but I was like fresh out of another relationship that had been going on for like a year. And so I just didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea about like Josh, you know, that he was just trying to sweep in right away or that I was just jumping from one guy to the next or anything because that's just not really my personality and so I was like just like oh my gosh like we've got to just make sure that this goes at a slow pace I don't even know if this is something I want I set pretty strict boundaries about like physical like we didn't touch at all we we spent a lot of time together we enjoyed talking to each other and I don't want to hear any like oh you shouldn't have been in the same room we were you know it wasn't that we stayed up literally all night but late into the night we'd stay up till like midnight yeah and then you know, like like what she's saying, we had clear boundaries of what that looked like. I don't even know if we had hugged at that point. Like we we lived in that house for weeks together, and we didn't even have each other's number. Like I never yeah. even gave him my number. <laughs> yeah, it was it wasn't until I think you were going home for, for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that was when we exchanged phone numbers because mm -hmm. I was like, "You're gonna be gone. Like, what what am I gonna do?" You know, my sister was working. We hung out all the time. And, you didn't have a job. And I didn't have a job. <laughs> there, was, there was one time where I thought, man, maybe this girl does like me. Maybe uh, all this time hanging out and be, becoming friends was uh, <laughs> what she secretly liked me. So we were sitting on the couch one night on the two couches. We always sit on two separate couches. I like and to fully lay out at night. Like, I don't like to be sharing a couch with anybody. <laughs> still, we were sitting there and I was like, hey, I'm, I guess I'm gonna shoot my shot, see if, if she's interested. I was like, you wanna come sit over here by me on this couch? I'm fully laying down, like fully covered with blankets. I'm like, yeah. why would he think that I would ever wanna get up from work? <laughs> she was like, no, I'm cool over here. I'm like, okay. I go back to school and start the semester. She moves out of my sister's house and there's a basketball game coming up at the college that I was going to and so I invited her to come with me. And so we go and we have a great time. We're hanging out. I got her a, a few um, housewarming gifts that I wrapped in Justin Bieber posters or oh, something like, like M&M. M &M, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Things Here's that it. I did not need at all. And I was actually offended. At, you got me like microwave cookbooks because he thought that I couldn't cook. When in reality, I can cook. I just didn't cook to her. <laughs> she just doesn't cook. <laughs> she can cook, she just doesn't. Well, so then that night I go back to my my room and my roommate at the time, he goes, man, why aren't you dating that girl? And I was like, nah, man, like we're just friends. What are you talking about? And he's like, no, she's different. You love her. And I was like, what? No, you're crazy, man. He's like, you should be dating her. Like you, you need to ask her out. So I called Kristen that night and I asked her what she thought about it. And she shut me down. That was She's the like, second time. Cause yeah. when I was gone over Christmas vacation, oh, asked you asked me coffee. if I'd want to go to coffee. And I said, I will go to coffee as long as it's not a date. 
I'm not looking to date right now. And so I said no. He was like, oh my gosh, of course. Like, no, that's not at all what this was supposed to be. So we didn't go on it. So we didn't, we didn't, go, go, we didn't go get coffee. Because that's what it was. <laughs> well, we lived in that house together. So it was like, why don't we get coffee? We can just go to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't drink coffee either. <laughs> so, so yeah, she's like, no, I've thought about it. Like, I really, I really like you. You're one of my best friends, but I don't think it's a good idea. And her reasons were that I was still in school, I was in college. Um, I didn't have a job and I didn't have a car and we lived like about an hour away from each other. You're also younger than I am. And I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit younger. So, so I'm a year and a half older than he is, but I also went to college immediately after high school. And so when we met, I was already graduated and in my like career and he had taken a couple years and toured and stuff with music after high school. And so when I met him, he had just gotten started with college. And so I just wasn't looking to go backwards, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's just the truth. <laughs> yeah, I'm not offended. Uh, I was going to school on, on scholarships and things like that. So I didn't have a job because I didn't have time to have a job. Well, you did uh, worship. You did like traveling worship at that time. And yeah. you just had their van that they traveled in. Yeah, exactly. So. I, and I lived on campus. I didn't need to have a car or anything like that. And so I was like, okay, that's fine. I intentionally was like, I'm not gonna make this awkward if she says no. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow. We talked every day. And so hung up the phone, went to bed, texted her the next day, just like normal. Uh, went on with being friends. So in the meantime, I was like super hesitant because I really liked him but he's very different than anybody I've ever dated before. And I just like, I was very unsure. Again, this all has to do with like the fact that I didn't want him to be seen as like a rebound. You know, like I really respected him and I didn't want people to just be like rolling their eyes at us because it's like, okay, yeah, now Kristen's with this dude. But at the same time, there was somebody else who was kind of like texting me, messaging me, who he was like a really nice, guy he was like handsome he was kind of connected to my friend group that i had in dallas the relationship that i had with him was not anything like the relationship that i had with josh with josh it was just so easy so fun i don't remember who told me the elevator test but that's what i always tell everybody like if you're having trouble deciding on like who you want to be with or whatever just imagine that you are stuck in an elevator all day long with one of these people and which one of these people would you want to be with and I remember when I, I did the elevator test, there, it was hands down Josh. I would always rather be with Josh than anybody else. At that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna start giving one word responses to this other dude until he kind of stops texting me. <laughs> yeah, we guys were friends and like I knew him also. Like it wasn't a, it wasn't like they were dating or anything right. like and that. And neither really were, nice. neither, we weren't dating either. He definitely liked Kristen and so did I, you know, but, uh, survival of the fittest, I guess. And <laughs> so, you know, we we went and we watched these movies together and we're sitting on the couch by each other and I just like reached my hand over and grabbed her hand, like just kind of low key, you know, it was on the side, you know, and- Yeah, my body from head to toe was like burning hot. I, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, is he holding my hand? I was, it was one of those things that I was like, I can't go back from this, like we can't, not have hold, hold, held, held hands. hands. <laughs> we can't not have held hands now. Like, yeah. oh crap, I think that this is actually going somewhere. I don't think I've ever been so nervous to date somebody. Well, the other, the other element of it too, like for you guys who don't know Kristen growing up, like Kristen has had every guy in the world probably be interested to some extent or another. And she's only ever had me included three boyfriends, like yeah. three guys that she's ever even dated. And so uh, it really was a big deal um, that that was moving forward. And so- Yeah, and one of them was really long-term too. And so I think my only experience was like, okay, is this like a lifetime commitment? You know, I was like, we're holding hands. Oh my gosh, does this mean that this is gonna turn into a five-year relationship? Like that's so did. scary. <laughs> <laughs> Longer. I just wasn't of the like, oh, like let's just try this out. Let's just try out yeah. this person. Like, let's just date. I was talking to her, I think we were making lunch or dinner or something like that. And I said, hey, here's the deal. Like I'm gonna be in school for a few years uh, and then I'll be done. I don't have a job because my school is paid for by what I do with these different worship teams and, 
and traveling and doing all this stuff. So I can't have a job and do that and go to this private school. I told and him so, though, I was like, if you want to take me on a date, you have to pick me up in a car, drive me to the date and you have to pay for the date. <laughs> So I did, but anyway, so I told her, I was like, you, I think that you like me and I like you. I get that you have these concerns, but I think that we should give it a shot. I kind of have a five year rule for people that are young and dating that in five years, you will either be married to that person that you're interested in, or you won't even know them. And I still believe that to be true. You know, you really like this person, take the shot because five years from now, I, I would put money on it. You probably either won't know them or you will be in a serious relationship with them. We talked about it. I said, I'll take you out on the date. I'll pay for the date, all that stuff. And so I did. We went out on our first date on Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah, it was super fancy. We went to Maggiano's, Italian, whatever. Very fancy. Very fancy. <laughs> uh, it was good. But anyways, we went there and never looked back after yeah. we started dating it was pretty quick that we knew i think we knew that we were gonna get married pretty early on but it was just because we were such great friends the two other boyfriends that i had had one was a great friend but there wasn't a whole lot of like romance to the relationship and the other one was a lot of like fancy dates and traveling but our friendship was not there like it was not he was not a good friend to me and so it was such a refreshing thing to me to be with Josh because not only was he like super sweet and romantic, but he was like even a greater friend than I could have ever hoped for. You're still my best friend. I better be. You are. <laughs> so we started dating in January, or no, February. And uh, then- Like April. Yeah, April, we came up here to visit her family and had a good time, it was great. Well, then in June July. or July, we went to uh, a family vacation to the Lake of the Ozarks and spent the weekend with them. And that's when I asked her dad if I could marry her, which was so nerve wracking. Uh, I'm glad that Todd loves me now, but man, in that moment, I was like, oh, I don't know. It was kind of like a weird moment because we were running out of time. And, you know, I was young and, I would do it differently now, but I was nervous. So we're sitting on the dock and Kristen and the rest of the family are coming in from a boat ride. And after this boat ride, we're gonna leave to head back to Dallas. And I was like, so Todd, I'm really nervous. Uh, I love your daughter and can I marry your daughter? <laughs> and I, I think he said like something along the lines of like, uh, Sure, like you don't need my blessing or something along those lines. It was more and like, you need her permission, not my permission. Yeah, yeah, something. something like that. <laughs> yeah, so we we left, went back to Dallas, and I knew that I wanted to ask her in Omaha. And so the next time that we were gonna be up here, I think was for Thanksgiving. By the way, y'all, in this time that we started dating, uh, I got a job. And a car. And a car. <laughs> um, uh, bought a ring. We came up for another trip up to Omaha from Dallas and all of her family, extended family, they do a, a big thing that the weekend after Thanksgiving, the Saturday after, Friday after Thanksgiving, we went out on a date and there's this river that goes through Omaha and we went down there and there's all these Christmas lights and everything is really pretty. And I cried my whole way through uh, asking her to marry me. Because. And I didn't even think anything of it because he cried every time he would confess his love for me. And I like Josh is a very how do you say it? <laughs> like, emotional. He's like an emotional person. Yeah. And I am not an emotional person. And so he would always just, you know, tell me how much he loved me and he'd just cry through it, you know. And so every time I would just be like <laughs> you know and so it was the same with this one i remember your beard was like soaked with tears he was just trying to get through it it's like i'm down on of a knee i said yes yeah no it was such an i always tell people too like it was such an easy yes you know like i just i mean we've been through a lot but like me deciding that i wanted to be with you was not a hard decision at all and so i always tell people who are like really struggling with whether or not they should be with somebody i'm like this should be this should be an easy answer. Yeah. And if it's not, it's probably not the person that you're supposed to be with. I would always get emotional about like telling you how much I love you 
it's because like I don't feel like I deserve to have someone like Kristen. I have all kinds of horrible things in my past and I had done things that, that I, I regretted and you know, here she is, she's like this pure, beautiful, uh, smart, talented, funny, like great friend, super loving person. And I, I, I loved and felt honored that she loved me. And so the thought of telling her that even before I proposed, it made me emotional because I didn't feel like I would ever deserve someone like her. And so, and she's better than I could have ever imagined. So anyways, that's why I would get emotional about it. Just so you know, I do the same thing whenever I think about God's grace towards me. But um, before we get into that, before I start crying. No. Okay. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we get engaged and then pretty quick, we got engaged in November and got married in June of the next year. So it was pretty fast. Yeah. Even, Even six, six months, months yeah. I felt like we could have done it in four and I would have been fine. That's just our experience. <laughs> we moved up to Omaha probably three or four months after September. After we got married in June, we had an opportunity to move up to Omaha uh, in September. And I think we actually moved up here on September 11th. Oh, did we? Yeah, I think so. So that's like the first six months. There's a whole 10 years after that. <laughs> we don't have time to get into all that, but we've been through a lot. Lots of ups, lots of downs. But Mostly my fault. The ups are your <laughs> fault, the downs are my, my fault. We're in it together. We're in it together. Well, I hope that you uh, you enjoyed hearing part of our story. I always like getting to jump on here and say hi to you guys. We appreciate you watching, listening to us. Yeah, hearing about me crying. <laughs> the moral of the story is that the most romantic person always ends up with the least romantic person. <laughs> That's true. Kristen cries, but it's just after the fact. I cry when I'm mad or embarrassed. <laughs> Never in like appropriate moments. So it's just a nah, horrible side of me. <laughs> I love I love her. Oh, I love you too. I love you. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Y'all, I hope that you liked this video. I know that it's kind of a break from the average, but when we asked people to ask questions, I can't tell you how many people asked about how we met and our story and everything. So maybe we'll get into more of it someday, but for now, <laughs> this is all you get. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe. And until then, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.